By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim. Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we have a sweet matchup for you because I'm bringing my Thomas's Toy Store deck back to the channel. It's an all-out artifact deck and it was so much fun to play it last time. I believe that was like two weeks ago on the channel against Anna. And today I am playing it against Redmar, a friend of the channel and also a patron of the channel. So welcome Redmar back here on Timmy Talks and he's bringing with him a deck that I've called The Underground. It's blue, it's black, and it's kind of control-ish with a lot of those good blue-black cards in them. And also he's put a few of his favorite cards in the deck and I always love it when players do that because, I mean, why do we play old school, right? Because we love to play certain creatures or spells from 93, 94, so I love it when players do that. Uh, one of the cards he's playing with, for example, is Evil Eye of Orms by Gore. I think that's super cool. He's playing that as a one-off. But um, before I jump into the deck text, because I've got lovely uh, deck photos of both of the decks, I would first like to point out that, as always, you can also choose to skip that section. Maybe check it out after the game. I know some people prefer to do that. The easiest way to do this is by checking out the description below. There you will find several timestamps. One of the timestamps reads MTG Games. Click on there. It'll take you straight to the action. And in the description below, you can also find more information about the rule set and also a link to the Timmy Talks Patreon program. So if you'd like to support the channel, just like Redmar, check out Timmy Talks, or I should say patreon.com slash Timmy Talks to find out how you can do that or check out the description below for the link to the Patreon page. Okay, now that that is all out of the way, I'm going to start with the deck tech section of this video, and I'm gonna start with my deck, Taunus' Toy Store. Let's have a look. And here we see my deck, Taunus' Toy Store. Now maybe you're wondering, who is Taunus? Well, Taunus is the apprentice of Urza, so he was like his right-hand man. He was a really talented artificer and used to have a toy store before he became an artificer, so hence the name, uh, Taunus's toy store and when you read the flavor text on Triskelion you can read that people believe that he is the one that created the trike so I thought if you created the trike you probably also created the Tetravus so Tetravus is also in this deck and of course there are also cards in the game of magic that are named after Taunus like the Candelabra of Taunus and Taunus's coffin so those cards are in here as well now when we look at this deck this is really a full-on artifact deck right so what I hope to do I hope to get to Tron lands together so the tower, the mine, and the power plant so that they tap for a lot of mana and I can start casting my really bigger artifacts. And of course, I'm combining this with the Candelabra of Tanis. So Candelabra of Tanis is a really nifty artifact. It's one to cast, pay X, untap X target lands. So what I can do here is if I have all the Tron lands, I can tap my three Tron lands for seven mana, put three of those mana into my Candelabra of Tanis, untap my lands again and so I can tap my Tron lands again and I can have a bonus of four mana so all of a sudden I get 11 mana out of three Tron lands can you still follow me well you know I'm going to show you hopefully in the game anyway that will kind of clear it out and of course when you're playing with this Candelabra of Tanis it also works really well with Mishra's Factories because you can untap the Mishra's Factory while it's attacking and then it can pump itself an additional time or you can just do all kinds of shenanigans with it I'm also playing with Deserts the same idea I can up, uh, untap the Desert multiple times if I am lucky enough to find an active library of Alexandria and a Candelabra of Tanis on the board together. I mean, oh boy, that's just nuts because I can then untap the Candelabra. I mean, use the Candelabra of Tanis to untap the library of Alexandria and I can like draw extra cards above like the one extra card I'm already drawing from uh, the library of Alexandria. So that would be just really nuts. So you can just do a lot of fun things with the Candelabra of Tanis. The problem with the candlestick though is that sometimes you have no purpose for it and it's just a lost card. You know, you've just got to wait till all the components kind of hit the board before you can really uh, take advantage of it and abuse it, you know, but it is a very, very powerful artifact. Now, if I've got all this mana, one of the main things that I can do, of course, with it is use it for my rocket launcher. Rocket launcher, of course, for to cast, you cannot use it to turn it comes into play, but after that, you can pay two mana to deal one damage to any target and it destroys itself at the beginning of the next end step. Now this beginning of the next end step is pretty important because it means that I can use it twice if I use it the right way. Because I can use it at the end of the end step of my opponent and then I get to keep it my entire turn until 
the next beginning of the end step, right? So I can basically use it twice, which is really cool. And of course, uh, the rocket launcher works really well with the Tron Candelabra uh, a combo if I can assemble those pieces. Now, if I don't have my rocket launcher, that's also fine. When you're looking at this list, there are a lot of artifacts in here with a high casting cost, right? I'm playing two Sword of the Ages. Sword of the Ages, awesome card, six to cast, comes into play tapped. When it untaps, you can tap and sacrifice an X amount of creatures and deal damage equal to their power to any target. The thing is, the creatures though and the sword, they are removed from the game, unfortunately. I mean, if they would go to the graveyard, this card would be so much more useful, but I still think it's good in this deck because I'm playing with juggernauts who have five power. I'm playing, you know, with all those bigger creatures that all have four power. Juggernauts have five power, like I said, and I'm also playing with the Colossus of Sardia, which is a nine nine, right? So if we could get a Colossus on the board at a certain point, sack it to the sword, then it doesn't even have to deal combat damage. There, there's nine damage right there. And if I can just combine it with a Juggernaut, I already have 14 damage, right? That is quite a lot of damage. So I think Sword of the Ages will do really well in here. I'm also playing with the uh, one Mirror Universe. I think Mirror Universe in decks like this is quite important because you know you can fall behind so quickly while you try to assemble all your pieces. I don't have access to bolt or to swords. There's not really a way for me to quickly dispose of a creature. So when I'm playing against a more aggressive deck, Mirror Universe could come in really handy so that when I'm almost dead, hopefully just in time, you know, I can uh, swap life totals with the Mirror Universe. Um, then of course, I'm also playing here with Taunus's Coffin, which is really nice synergy with Tetravis and with uh, Triskelion. Maybe you wonder why. Well, I can put a creature in the coffin, then I can untap my coffin again. And when the creature comes out of the coffin, all the enter the battlefield triggers happen again. So my Triskelion comes into play with three plus one plus one counters on it. If it's uh, coming out of the coffin, the same thing happens. So I can just like save up a lot of counters. I can make a really big trike or I can make a really big Tetravis. So again, um, th the thing with this is that you do need a lot of time. So this deck it needs some time. And of course, to kind of accelerate this, I am playing with all the Moxons. So hopefully the Moxon can help me to go really quick. And hopefully, you know, I can assemble Tron really quick. If not, I am playing with one Jalem Tome to kind of quickly go through my deck. I'm also playing with two JM Day Tomes. What I really like is the synergy between Suchi and JM Day Tome. When Suchi dies, you get four mana. The problem is Suchi often dies in combat, meaning you can only use those four mana for fast effects or to cast instants or interrupts. And that's not always possible, right? But of course, with the book, I can always use that four mana to draw a card with my Jam Day Tome. So having a Suchi in play with a Jam Day Tome, it is always a great feeling because then when your opponent kind of disenchants your Suchi on your end step, you're like, okay, fine, you know, I get, I get a card from it. You know, I'm fine, I can use it for my book. And it's kind of a feel good for me and a feel bad for my opponent. And that's why I really like that synergy. And of course, I love drawing cards. Anyway, uh, this is my deck. I'm really looking forward to show it to you on the channel. I hope it's going to do all the crazy stuff that I have in my mind. Let's hope it works. And now let's take a look at the deck of my opponent. And here we see the deck of Repmar. So this is blue and black. And that really takes me back because a lot of people used to play blue black back in 94, 95, 96 when I kind of started playing. Um, I also remember Underground Sea being the most expensive dual land. Like the dual land after that was Tundra, which was white blue, of course, ideal for control. Um, when I'm looking at this list, first thing I notice here is that there are a lot of lands in this list. We've got 30 spells and 30 lands, right? So that's kind of interesting. Then again, it's not that surprising because a lot of the lands that you play with in old school aren't really considered full lands. Like, for example, you play Maze of If that doesn't produce any mana. So it's more like a spell as a function in the deck that really as a land. You're also playing with Mistress Factories that you can, of course, use very aggressive, for example. And as soon as you animate them into assembly workers, they're very vulnerable. Also, they only tap for colorless mana, so you cannot get any blue or black mana out of them. So it's really difficult with the mana base. It's not just like counting your mana, think, oh, okay, I've got 24 lands, the mana section is sorted. No, 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 in old school, it is kind of difficult. Also, for example, a card like Strip Mine, you're gonna use it to destroy land at the side of your opponent. So again, it's more like a spell. So if you take the Mazes of If and the Strip Mine away, then you actually have 26 lands that you play with. And of those 26, there are four factories. So when you kind of calculate it that way, it makes sense that he's playing with so many lands. Um, also, he's not playing with any Mox, and he is playing with Power, though, because we see three blue power cards here in the deck, Ancestral Recall, Time Twister, and Time Walk. So 
I mean, that is obviously really, really strong. They're here in the deck. When we're looking at the rest of the list, we of course see the Hypnotic Specters. We also see some cards that I really enjoy. We don't see a Juzam Jin. Instead, he's playing with three Suchis. That kind of makes sense because Suchi is, of course, not affected by City in a Bottle, which is a card you see, well, you used to see it quite a lot, but now it's kind of in some sideboards. But anyway, it's, it's a thing you got to take into consideration. And of course, uh, you kind of play the Abyss on the Suchi, you kind of play a Terror on the Suchi. So there, there are a few reasons to play Suchi over Juzam Jin. Uh, we also see two clones in the deck. I love that. I'm a big fan of clones. It's great to see that you're playing that one, Redmar. Uh, we also see the beautiful Evil Eye of Orms by Gore. So a creature I already discussed uh, briefly in the introduction. It's such a cool card. It's one black and four. And um, when it's in play, you can only attack with evil eyes, right? So if you've got multiple of them, you can attack with them. So for example, Redmar can clone them and attack with his army. The cool thing about the evil eye of Orms by Gore is it cannot be blocked except by wolves. Hardly anybody plays by wolves, uh, with wolves. So this creature is unblockable. So that's pretty sweet. Uh, he's also playing with one Willow the Wisp, which is nice. When I was looking at this list overall, it seems to be quite controlling to me. And I think uh, that's because of the mazes of if because of the counter spells, even though he's only playing with two of those, uh, and also because of the underground uh, uh, dreams, of course. So, I mean, that's that's a very strong card in a more controlish shell, and I think Time Twister is also really strong with those um, underworld dreams, actually. I said underground, didn't I? They're underworld dreams. But anyway, the underworld dreams are really good with Time Twister. Um, I think a little bit of advice, but I'm not sure. I mean, obviously... It's always hard to talk about somebody else's deck, but I think I would probably add an extra Gem Day Tome, maybe a Jalem Tome as well, because you are playing with a lot of land. So if you're land flooded, your Jalem Tome can help you to kind of get through your deck a little bit quicker at the start of the game. And of course, a Gem Day Tome is better later in the game because it gives you that card advantage. And because you're playing with a lot of land, you probably have a lot of mana open to potentially use your Gem Day Tome for. Anyway, but it's just purely based at looking at this list and haven't played against it or played with this deck at all. Talking about that, uh, we discussed the deck of Redmar, we discussed my deck, that means we are ready. Let's go to the match. Game number one, here we go. So I'm on the play here, I'm playing a mono brown deck, so it's all artifacts, and of course I'm playing Tron in that deck, and I'm playing against Redmar, and he's playing a blue-black, and I've called this deck the Underground because he's playing. he plays, of course, with Underground Seeds, but also with Underworld Dreams. And uh, here I go again, turn number two, playing an Urza's Tower, passing to turn six cards in hand. Hopefully I can find an Urza's Mine next turn. That would be fantastic. I would have Tron and I can make seven mana. Let's first see what Redmar can do. Tapping two. Are we going to see a sinkhole here for two black? That would be a little bit disastrous. Ooh, that's good for me, a Felwerstone. Now, Felwerstone does nothing, absolutely nothing for Redmar in this matchup because I'm only playing with colorless mana. So there's nothing for the Felwerstone to copy. Playing a Desert here. Ah, uh, no, Earth's is mine, unfortunately for me. So I don't have Tron. I do have a Mox here, four mana. That's kind of the sweet spot in my deck. I'm playing a playset of Suchi, playset of Juggernaut. And here I go, casting a Gem Daytone. That's also pretty good. It will help me dig for that Urza's Mine that will uh, activate Tron. Passing the turn to Redmar here. Let's see what he can do. Ancestral Recall. That is really sweet for him. Drawing three cards. Let's see what he can find. If he can put some pressure on me. He still has to play a land for turn. There's the land for turn. Another Underground Sea. Tapping two... Wow, even more power hitting the board. Time Walk here. So Ancestral Recall into Time Walk. That's pretty sweet. Taking his extra turn, untapping everything. And all I can do here is wait and hope for the best. There's another land. Is he going to cast a Suchi, for example, or an Hypnotic Spectre? There's a Suchi. Okay, so putting some pressure on the board, passing the turn here. He does step out, so that does mean that he cannot counter. So he's kind of given me an opening here. Playing another Desert. So I've got five. Now remember, I'm playing with Triskelions and Tetravuses in my deck, so six is really a nice number for me. That will happen next turn. 
One of my options could be to just pass and then on end step, draw an extra card with the gem they told me. It would mean I take four damage, of course, from the Suchi. Passing the turn here, so doing nothing. And remember, I am playing Mono Artifact, so I have no access to instance. So Redmar now having access to five mana, could cast Evil Eye of Orms by Gore, which is five, but if he does, he can no longer attack with the Suchi, so I don't think he will. He is playing with a one-off one of the Evil Eye. Let's see what he's gonna do here. Swinging in with the Suchi, putting me on 16. And end step, I'm gonna draw a card for turn, or at the end of the turn uh, of Redmar, and now I'm gonna draw my card for turn here. But I am on 16, I do need some answers. Still no Urza's mine. I'm really trying to dig for the mine. Cannot find it though. I do now have six, so I could cast a Tetravis or a Trike for six mana. I mean, still it wouldn't be ideal because do you really want to trade a Triskelion for a Suchi? Tapping four, okay, there's a Suchi. So at least I have a blocker now. Or do I? Will there be a counter spell from Redmar? No, there's a Sionic Blast. So the nice thing here is that synergy between Jalem Tome and um, Jam Day Tome, I mean, and uh, Suchi, that I can use the four mana from the Suchi to draw a card with the Tome. So at least it's something, I get some value, but the bigger problem here is that Redmar can at attack again and put me on 12, or I have to chump with the uh, Mistress Factory. Obviously, I don't want to do that. Do I want to go to 12? I think, I think it's okay. Well, let, let's first see what Redmar's going to do. There is a City of Brass, tapping four, another Suchi, swinging in for four. And so he is putting me on 12 and passing the turn. So lots of pressure here. And I mean, this is getting a little bit dangerous for me. I just don't have a lot of time anymore. Next turn, he could swing in for eight. I think the first thing on the agenda here is to play out some blockers, preferably another Suchi. Atonis' Coffin could help. An Icy Manipulator could help. Urza's Mind could really help because then it would have all the mana probably to just cast everything. Tapping six here. Okay, there's a Tetravis. Ah, oh, Counterspell. This is painful for me. That Counterspell is great for Redmar. That means he can attack me for eight next turn. Put me on four. I mean, this is really bad news. Playing a Swamp here. Tapping three. Underworld Dreams making matters even worse. Gonna put me on four. Oh, this is a huge problem for me. That Underworld Dreams is also such a nail in the coffin. Can put me on three. And also every time I now use my Tome, I deal an extra point of damage to myself. I mean, this is really a disaster scenario. Even if I can find a way to kill the Suchis, I'm still in trouble here. Let's first see what I can do. Tapping four here, it seems. There's an Icy Manipulator, meaning I can tap one of the Suchis. But the problem is I cannot tap both. And I don't have enough mana to an animate my factory and tap out one of the Suchi, so I think I'm pretty dead. Passing the turn here. I need a miracle. Now remember, I'm playing Mono Brown, so no instants or anything. No tricks up my sleeve here. There's a tap for four. There's a Jam de Tome. And now he wants to swing in, so he's gonna attack. All I can do is tap one of the Suchis, take four from the other, and that's game. So game number one here. Oh, look at that. The Urza's mine was on top of the library. Oh, man. I kind of felt like, in hindsight, you know, maybe I shouldn't have taken that card. You know, the one time that I took a hit, perhaps I should have played something out if I had that in hand in the first place, of course. But, yeah. Redmar really answered my creatures well with the uh, uh, Psionic Blast and of course the uh, the Counterspell. I think that was really key in this first game. Anyway, we're going to dive into our sideboards and we're going to catch up with you in game number two. Game number two, here we go. So I'm on the play, of course, after losing that first game. Looks like I've taken a mulligan, by the way. Five cards now in hand after playing the land. The Urza's is mine. Passing the turn to Redmar. Look at him go. Soul Ring turn one. 
He is ramping up. Let's see what I can do in my second turn. Okay, there's a power plant. So I've got a mine. I've got a power plant. If it can find a tower, that will be ideal. I, I would have natural Tron turn three. That will be epic. Four cards in hand. Actually, five in hand passing to turn back to Redmar. Let's see what he can do. There's another underground C. Four mana already. That is kind of scary. Let's see what he can do. I hope I'm not going to see a Hypnotic Spectre because my deck's really bad against Hypnotic Spectre. He's going to go for a Demonic Tutor. And uh, I think after sideboarding, if I remember correctly, I boarded in some extra Mazes of If because of those Hypnotic Spectres. Because remember, I hardly have any Flyers in the deck. I'm playing Colorless, so I have no access to Swords or Lightning Bolt. I just don't have a quick answer for the Hypnotic Spectre. My best answer is to have a Maze, kind of stall time until I can play my Tetravis or a Triskelion or something else, or I have enough Deserts out to kill the Hypnotic Spectre. But I don't have a quick fix. Anyway, Redmar here has, has looked up his card and passed the turn back to me. Let's see if I can find that tower to play out some big stuff. There is a factory, unfortunately for me, and a Mox. Okay, that's pretty good. So again, I've got four mana. This reminds me a lot of game one where we had a similar scenario. Let's see if I can now put a uh, creature on the board, maybe a Juggernaut for some pressure. Okay, it's a good card, but it's a Tome again. And we saw what happened in game one. I did exactly the same in game one playing the Tome. And yeah, that didn't help me much. There's an island from Redmar. And let's uh, see what he picked up. He's got five mana now. That's quite a lot. Tapping a blue. Okay, there's the Ancestral Recall. So I guess that's the card that he looked up with the Demonic. Or maybe he already had it in hand. But then again, I think you would first cast Ancestral Recall, see what you can find before you would play your Demonic Tutor. So I'm pretty sure he looked it up with the Tutor. Tapping two. There's a Sinkhole. Is he going to go for the Tron Lands? Or, okay, he's going to go for the Mishra's Factory. That makes sense. And the Sinkhole being quite good here, actually. Because also it's putting me on three lands. There's a strip mine, so I wonder if I'm going to actually use the strip. It looks like I'm using it for mana, playing a Suchi, passing the turn back to Redmar. So remember game one when he played a Psionic Blast on the Suchi? Let's see if he's going to do the same. Tapping five here. There's the Evil Eye of Orms by Gora. Now remember, this is a 3 6 creature that cannot be blocked. Except by walls. I don't have any walls. And it's also a great blocker for my Suchi because it's got six toughness. This is really difficult to kind of, you know, get around. Playing in the second power plant, by the way, passing the turn. When I put the Tron lands on top of each other, it means they're kind of they're the same. So in this case, I've got two power plants and one mine. Passing the turn with two cards in hand. Keeping mana open, of course, you use my tome, probably on end step here of Redmar. Let's see what he can do. Redmar having seven cards in hand. That's quite a lot. Tapping two. Are we going to see copy artifact? Yes, there's a copy artifact. I wonder what he's going to copy. Probably the Jam Day Tome. At least that's what I would do. Because you can just keep drawing with that. And you've got your blocker anyway with the Evil Eye. He is attacking here with the Evil Eye. Put me on 17. And five cards in hand here for Redmar. So I'm using the Gem Tome on the end step. I'm going to go up to three cards and then, of course, draw a card for turn. That means four in hand. Let's see what I can do. I mean, my, there are so many cool cards in my deck that I haven't played yet this match. So I'm just really keeping my fingers crossed. I mean, game number two, I have to win this one or it's already the end of the episode. And who wants that? Who wants this episode to be over? Nobody, right? Anyway, attacking for four. There's a Hercules Recall, so he's going to send everything back. Interesting, a card coming in from the sideboard. It looks like I'm going to use my mana here to tap to draw another card with the Gem Tome. And I'm surprised here, by the way. I think I'm making a mistake. Did you see that I didn't tap both of my Moxon? I could have tapped both of my Moxon because I'm going to replay them now anyway. That was a free mana. So now I tapped a land instead of that. That's bad magic, actually, because I could have had... Four mana now. That is some sloppy magic. That surprises me. Anyway, let's see what else I can do. Did I already have a land drop? I don't think so. Gonna play another power plant. Wow. 
This is the thing when you play Tron. I mean, it happens so often that you find like four power plants and, and, and not that single, in this case, the tower that you need to activate Tron. Anyway, tapping out here to play my Gem Day Tome again. Interesting because, well, I cannot block the Evil Eye anyway, so it kind of makes sense because I wanted to say why not play out the Suchi and block the Evil Eye, but I can't, of course. So he will be able to deal three points of extra damage, put me on 14. And I think he's gonna, yeah, so he's gonna, oh, I, I thought he was gonna tap the copy artifact, which is a book to draw a card, but he's not, he's playing a clone instead, cloning the evil eye of Orms by Gore. So he can do six damage now per turn. This is really bad. Oh, and an underworld dreams. And of course he can still attack. Oh, this is such a bad turn for me and a good turn for Redmar. He's putting me on 14. Gonna draw for turn, gonna go to 13. Oh man. I do know that I've boarded in some extra Nevenerals discs, so hopefully I can find those. Okay, this kinda helps. You know, Maze of If. I believe I boarded in two extra from the sideboards. I'm playing three at the moment. Tapping four, probably gonna see that Suchi again. Now remember, I cannot use the Suchi to block any of those evil eyes. So that's pretty problematic. Okay, there's a Candelabra of Tanis. This is really good because Candelabra of Tanis can, of course, untap lands. That means I can use my Maze of If twice and I can send both Evil Eyes back. That is pretty sweet. So at least I'm not going to take any damage from the Evil Eyes. There is, of course, still the Underworld Dreams on the board. I'm on 13. Anyway, let's see what Dreadmar can do here. Tapping. Okay, there's another Hercules Recall. He's using these pretty aggressively. I, I, I do think it's a good decision because he can then deal an extra point of damage. I wonder if he has a counter magic in play. He's going to counter something away next turn. Anyway, deals three points of damage. Now put me on 10 because I can, of course, now only send one, uh, one creature back because I no longer have the Candelabra of Taunus. Ooh, a Psionic Blast on my life total. He's making it into a race. This is really bad news for me. Gonna drop to six, gonna drop to five because of the Underworld Dreams. Oh, this is so bad. This is so bad. Playing another Maze of If. Okay, that's something. And casting a Nevenerals Disc. This is actually really sweet because Redmar just casted Hercules Rico, so I had to take all my artifacts back. And right now I'm saying, you know what? That's fine. I'm going to cast my disc. The thing is, this disc has to untap. If he can destroy this disc somehow, I'm toast. I'm on five. Oh, man. Even if he has a sinkhole, that would be bad news for me. He is going to draw a card now. With his GM de Tome. Going to dig a little bit deeper. I mean, sinkhole would be great. With sinkhole, he could... You know, take care of one of the mazes, attack, deal three points of damage, put me on two, next turn I would go on one. That would be pretty good. But he cannot find anything, passes the turn, and before my draw step, so in my upkeep, I'm going to use my disc, because I don't want to take any damage from the dreams here. So I'm going to use the disc, destroy everything, and this is great for me. It kind of feels like I'm back in the game. Yes, I'm on five, yes, he plays with Psionic Blast, so, I mean, I'm very vulnerable, but it, this feels good. And I've got a handful of magic cards. Starting off here with two Moxen, Pearl, and the Sapphire. I've got six mana open, which is the number I want to have to do all my shenanigans. Let's see if I can find a trike or something. Tapping four first. Or am I tapping six here? Untapping again. Okay, I've got, I guess I've got too many options here. <laughs> Maybe I'm thinking about first casting a Gem Day Tome, although I don't think I should because... I cannot activate it anyway. I mean, I love to draw cards, but I think in this scenario, it's better to put a creature on board, put some pressure on hopefully next turn. I know I still have that Tsuchi in hand. I have a Gem de Tome in hand. Tapping four. Okay, tapping six. Really taking my time here. Changing my mind again. Okay, this is... I am playing the Tome. Okay. I wonder why. Then it's going to be Tome and Candelabra of Tannis, okay? I wonder why, because I think since I tapped out on six, perhaps I've got uh, Triskelion in hand. 
there's an hypnotic specter. I mean, it's really good that I've got those mazes of if now because without the mazes, the hippie would have been a huge, huge problem for me. Four cards in hand now. Still looking, by the way, for the tower. A tower right now would be insane. Tapping six mana. What am I going to do for six? I'm really in the tank here. Look at that. Again, untapping it. What am I doing? Anyway, casting a Suchi, which we know I still had. And, you know, looking back at this game, I really think it would have been better to, you know, first play Suchi and then the Tome. But I probably want to have that guarantee that I could use the mana from the Suchi if he destroys it for the Tome. Tapping six. Okay, there's a Triskelion. Attacking here with my 4-4, finally able to deal some damage. Now, this is really interesting, and I think this is a... Uh, we, we talked about this afterwards, a little mistake from Redmar. He forgot that before damage is dealt, I can, of course, take the counters off the Triskelion, kill one of the creatures, in this case, the Hypnotic Spectre, and then, the, then we go to the damage step of combat, and that means that all of a sudden the Hippie is gone. You only have your 3-3 Factory, so the 3-3 Factory dies to the Suchi, so he's going to lose both creatures in this exchange, that's really bad for Redmar. So he's still an 18, but he's not doing anything. Just passing the turn. That means I can put full pressure on Redmar here. Attacking for 8. Probably will put him on 10. Exactly. Tapping 6. Even more creatures on the board. I'm going to go full on this. I don't have to worry about, for example, a balance or wrath of God. So I'm just going to play out everything I have. There is, of course, a chance that Redmar also plays maybe a Nevenerals disc in the sideboard. Perhaps he boarded that in. There is a Mishra's Factory in a pass. So this is not too bad for me. I can now attack him. Can I already go in for lethal? He's on 10. Yes, I can. I can win the game here. Going to go up to 3, or at least it seems to be so. Perhaps Redmar has something in hand, maybe another Hercules Recall. That would have a pretty big impact. Anyway, attacking with everything here. There he's animating. And it looks like he is blocking one of my 4-4. Four four. So I'm untapping my factory to make it a 3-3. Three three. So I'm going to deal 3, 5, 9 points of damage. Going to put him on 1. And then, of course, I can kill him with the final ping. Okay, and I can win that way. Another road to victory would have been to just strip mine his only blocker. But <laughs> I guess I guess I wanted to show that trick with Candelabra and Mishra's Factory, which is pretty cool. The Factory attacks, you untap the Factory, and then it can pump itself. You know, so you attack with a 3-3 Factory, which, which, is, which is pretty neat. I, I have to say, I'm really enjoying playing with the Candelabra of Tannis. There's so many cool little synergies and things you can do with it, and you really notice that once you're playing with it. Anyway, it is 1-1, one, one, uno, uno, and that means we're going to go to game number three. Game number three, here we go. So the winner of this game wins the match. Redmar, of course, on the play, so I guess he's slightly the favorite when you're on the play, right? Although his deck isn't that fast, so don't think it'll matter. Ooh, look at this ancestral recall by Redmar. Oh, that is sweet in the decisive third game. That is really nice. And of course, drawing a card for turn here. Probably doing that on my end step. I started with Urza's Mine, by the way. There's a Swamp here for Redmar. And I believe Redmar also took, but I'm not quite sure. I believe he took a Mulligan as well for that third game. So he started with a card less, but that's of course compensated by the Ancestral Recall. That is really sweet for him. Could be bad news for me, but he's just playing the two and it looks like he doesn't do anything else. Or, or, okay, there's a Willow to Wisp. Really sweet. Like that one Willow in his list. I like it. I like it. Um, anyway, they're playing in Urza's Power Plant. So I've got the mine. I've got the Power Plant. So again, I'm close to Tron. Playing a Mox here. Mox Emerald. Six in hand, passing the turn. Would be really sweet if I can finally get Tron. There's an Hypnotic Spectre. That is a problem. I need a Maze. Or Tron into Tetravis, that would be sweet. Maze of If, okay, that does it. Like I said, I boarded in two extra, so I'm playing with three Mazes of If after sideboarding. So it's pretty heavy, but I have to have those against those Hypnotic Spectres. They're just too good 
to ignore. There is a Mishra's factory. Tapping to, ooh, there's a sinkhole though. This is bad. This is really bad. It's gonna swing here. I'm gonna go to 18 and I'm gonna lose a card. Ay, 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 ay. That is not good. Counting out the cards, probably gonna roll the dice here, exactly. Card number six, I'm gonna lose. That's a Suchi. My, 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 five in hand. Going back up to six though, but hopefully I can find, okay, another Mox. Mistress Factory, so five lands, five mana I should say, because not five lands, two Mox and three lands. Tapping four, okay, there's an Icy Manipulator. Okay, this is good. This is good, I can use the Icy to tap down the Hypnotic Spectre. Let's see what's gonna happen. There's an Underground C. Five mana for Redmar here. He can animate the factory. Looks like he wants to do something else. Tapping out, well, not out completely. Playing another clone. Cloning the Hypnotic Spectre. That is pretty good. That is a problem. So, of course, I'm going to tap down the Hypnotic Spectre here so that he cannot attack me with it. But, yeah, now I've got two Hypnotic Spectres to worry about. This is not great. Okay, finding the tower. Now I've got Tron. Yeah, you see the clapping by Redmar. Thank you, man. I was super happy <laughs> to finally find Tron. Tapping seven. Let's see what I can do. Okay, playing a Triskelion here. So that's good. I mean, it can kill one of the hippies. I don't have to do that now, of course. I could kill the Willow, by the way. Tapping. Okay, also playing a Juggernaut. That means I should probably kill the Willow to Wisp here because Redmar doesn't have any black open. And next turn, you know, that Juggernaut is so much better without the Willow. But I guess I'm not doing it. I could, of course, tap it down as well the next turn with the Icy. The problem here, by the way, is... Oh, no, look what I did. I tapped out completely. So I can no longer use the Icy to tap one of the two hippies. I think this is an oversight from my part. Killing one of them. Losing a GM day tome. Oh, this is so stupid. I remember this moment. I think Redmar made it come like, oh, I see you tapped out. And I'm like, oh, this is so stupid. This is so stupid. Oh, man. Anyway, gotta get on with our lives. But the Jam Day Tone would have been so good when you've got Tron. Finding a Tonus' Coffin, which is super good with the uh, Triskelion, by the way. So, I mean, I'm still in a pretty good position. Tapping down the Evil Eye. Attacking here with the Juggernaut and with the Triskelion, which is a 2-2. Two -two. Oh, it looks like I'm changing my mind. Oh, I also want to attack with... No, I don't want to attack with the Factors. I need to keep the mana open for... I don't know what I'm doing. Anyway, I'm just attacking with the Juggernaut and the Triskelion. I think I could have attacked with it as well. And still not killing the Willow to Wisp. That surprises me a little bit. I wonder if I'm gonna put the Hypnotic Spectre in the coffin the moment that he attacks, so I can use Taunus' Coffin with three and tap and put target creature, exile target creature as long as the coffin remains tapped. Then when the coffin is untapped, the creature comes back tapped. Ooh, look at this, playing out a Dark Ritual into an Hypnotic Spectre. But he actually cannot attack with the Spectres anymore because the uh, Evil Eye is on the board. That is actually pretty sweet. I mean, Evil Eye says only creatures that are called Evil Eye can attack. So that's, that's really nice for me. He can no longer attack with Hypnotic Spectres. I mean, I am taking three, of course. Going to go down to 13. But I think things are looking really good for me because now what I can do on end step... I can put my uh, Triskelion into the Taunus' Coffin. Then, of course, I'm going to untap the Coffin. That means the uh, Triskelion comes back into play and the ETB triggers happen again. So he gets three counters. So now it's a 5-5. Five, five, and I can start basically just killing stuff. What I can also do is, is deal one damage here to the Will of the Wisp so that he has to regenerate it. Then it taps itself. That's another thing I can do. And it looks like I'm going to do that. So I'm going to... 
kill the wisp and of course Redmar is going to regenerate the wisp and I'm going to attack with the juggernaut because I have to I'm expecting is Redmar going to make a double or maybe even a triple block he's going to make a double block here but that's not smart yeah he changes his mind I think he wants to make a triple block because again you know I can use the counter from Triskelion here to kill so if he wants to kill the juggernaut he needs to block it with three creatures And even then I can choose to, to tap the trike before the, the factory before it can block. Anyway, he's declaring blocks, pumping the factory. So I'm going to use probably the counters here to kill at least one of the hypnotic specters. Exactly. So then I can kill his two other creatures. Yeah. And then lose the juggernaut. But this is a pretty good exchange for me. Tapping four here for another juggernaut. Okay, then it's an excellent exchange for me. It was already a good exchange, but now it's excellent. And I have my hypnotic or my icy manipulator open to tap the evil eye of orms by gore. So this is really looking good for me in game number three. I think Redmar needs, I mean, something like a Nevnerol's disc. Or or a time twister. Okay, that can, I mean, that can shake things up. But this, of course, kind of desperation mode also for Redmar's kind of acknowledging the fact that I've got board dominance at the moment. This is kind of what he has to do. Because I'm also really, I think I had no cards in hand anymore, right? And look at this, in response of the Time Twister, I'm going to put my, uh, my Triskelion here in the, uh, in the coffin. And again, I mean, this is really nice for me playing against the blue-black deck because you don't have Disenchant or Shatters or even worse, Shatter Storm. You do, of course, have cards like Energy Flux and you could also see that Hercules Recall can be kind of annoying. But not the end of the world. So here we're shuffling up. And I think if you're Redmar, I mean, I'm, I'm not sure if he plays discs in the side because he kind of needs a board wipe. I mean, I guess Hercules Recall would help a little bit, but uh, I still have Tron on the board, so I can just easily play out everything again. So it's not going to help him help him. I'm still on 13, which is too high to kind of hope for burn to kind of do the job. Probably wants to attack with evil orms. I'm probably going to tap it down with the icy. Let's first see if maybe he found something else in his in his hand now after the uh, the time twister. Sinkhole would be good to kind of stop the Tron thing from happening. Because this is kind of dangerous for Redmar passing a turn here. I've got a full hand, right? So if I, for example, have a Candelabra of Taunus together with Tron, I can make so much mana and do so many things. That is really like a horror scenario for Redmar, I think. Tapping two, are we going to see a sinkhole? We're going to see a Demonic Tutor. Okay. What can he look up here? I mean, if it's a Hercules Recall, then he's got to pass a turn. Give me a full turn with seven, seven cards in hand. Well, eight, actually, after my draw step. If he's got a disc, if, because I, I don't, I'm not sure that he does, actually. But if he has a disc, he could look it up. But remember, disc comes to play tapped. You need a whole more turn. He cannot play it out straight away. So it's also not ideal. He's probably dead before that as well. It's a really tough position here for Redmar. It's really difficult. Because what I can do now next turn is, or at and his end step, I can still use my IC. I could tap down his evil eye. Next turn, of course, my trike is going to come back into play. I can ping probably the Will of the Wisp twice so that the Willow dies. I can attack with the factory and with the Juggernaut. So deal seven points of damage. That would set him back to, uh, to six. So yeah, this is really, really rough for Redmar. This is like... I'm pretty sure right now he's going through his deck, looking for the card to save him, realizing there's none and going through the deck again, trying to find a card that can save him. I mean, a card like Drain Life would be kind of good, but I don't think he plays that. And even then, he doesn't have that much black mana, you know? Perhaps he can drop an extra black next turn and then he could do a Drain Life for four. That's not ideal. It's really difficult. I think if, if, if 
Did Redmar already have a land drop here? If he can do a land drop now, play a Hercules Recall, you know, that's going to at least set me back a little bit. I don't think he can, though. It looks like he's passing the turn, tapping down the Evil Eye. So I guess he already dropped his land for turn as well. And I'm untapping, of course, my Coffin again. So we see the Trike coming back onto the battlefield as a 5-5. Five -five. It's quite nice, by the way, to show you guys the synergy here. Because a lot of times when I have Thomas' Coffin, it, it just gets destroyed so quickly that I don't really have a chance to show it. Here we can see dealing a damage to the Willow. He's regenerating it, dealing another damage to the Willow. And the Willow is bye-bye. And now I can attack here for 7. I mean, that's really bad news. That would mean Redmar would drop to 6. Gonna play a Mishra's Workshop here. So even more mana for me to cast Artifacts. Remember, you can only use the mana from the Mishra's Workshop to cast Artifacts. Six cards in hand here, animating, attacking for seven. Yeah, this is the scenario I uh, talked about. And he's on, I believe, on six here. Bit of a blurry, yeah, <laughs> Redmore trying to fix the camera there. Yeah, now it's back. So he's on six. Only with that lonely, super cool evil eye of orange by Gore, but... It's looking so bad for him. Even if he has a Urkel's Recall, it's not going to save him. Tapping another Icy. So that means I'm just going to be this annoying person that just probably is going to tap down two of his lands in his upkeep. Right? Trying to kind of limit his options. So there's the pass then exactly in his upkeep. I'm probably just going to take three points of damage from the Evil Eye because, you know, I'm on 13 anyway. So I'm probably just going to try to tap down some lances, both of his duels, exactly. So he's got, I mean, he still has four lances left, but I just want to make it difficult on him. I guess he can stretch it. No, he cannot stretch it one more turn because I put the Triskelion into the Thomas' Coffin. So even if he plays a Hercules Recall, my Triskelion comes back tapped onto the battlefield with three additional counters. So it'll be turned into a 5-5. A five five. Attacking here first with the Evil Eye, by the way, putting me on, on 10. If he has maybe a Time Walk, that would be kind of nice. Time Walk here and Oracle's Recall. Tapping to black. Does he have maybe a Sinkhole? That would be quite nice. Sinkhole and Oracle's Recall, that's pretty good. The problem here is, of course, yeah, there's the Sinkhole. That's pretty good. Probably going to take the Urza's Tower. He could also take the untapped Mine, of course. But, I mean, he's playing Mono Brown, so doesn't have to worry about that mana. So, killing the Tower, that means my Tron's disabled. And then he's playing out the Urkel's Recall. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. I mean... I like that idea of first disabling my Tron and then play the Urkel's Recall because obviously the Urkel's Recall is a lot better than when my Tron's gone. The problem here, look at that trike. It's a 6-6. Six, six. Yeah, killing Redmar with a huge trike. It's got so many arms. He even had another Urkel's Recall in hand, but I think I think Urkel's Recall is probably the card he's got on the sideboard against artifact decks, which is good. However, you can see here that sometimes Hercules Recall is not that great, especially against decks that run Triskelion. And I guess then you really prefer to play with an Energy Flux. Or, you know, there are also some, some cards in, um, in black that could be interesting. But it's definitely tough when you're playing blue and black to kind of have the perfect answer to an artifact deck. I think, I really think Energy Flux is probably the best card to go to. Another strategy could be to say, I'm gonna play with uh, the Hercules Recalls as Redmar is doing, and then maybe also add um, a copy artifacts, or perhaps again, add an Evan Earl's Disc or two to the sideboard. I always kind of like that when I'm playing black or blue, because you just don't have a lot of answers once something is like on the battlefield in those colors. Anyway, uh, this was the match for today. I hope you've enjoyed it. I really enjoyed looking at it. And uh, Redmar, thank you so much for this match. We also played another match that will also come to the channel in the near future. And talking about that, if you don't want to miss any of that, any of what I'm going to post in the near future, make sure that you uh, hit that subscribe button and ring that bell so that you know exactly when I uh, post new stuff here. I do that uh, at least twice a week for the Magic game. So if you enjoyed this content, 
uh, yeah, you know, check that out, become a subscriber. And there are a few other things that you can do. You can also, of course, like, share, and comment on this channel. And last but not least, you can also become a patron of the show because here you can see the Patreon page, or at least a screenshot of the Patreon page. You can check out patreon.com slash Timmy Talks and find out how you can support the channel. It already starts with just $1 a month. And for that money, you get access to the uh, the Timmy Talks Discord page, which is really cool. You can meet all the other patrons and you can even talk to me. How cool is that? Uh, maybe even play against me at a certain tier level and your name will be mentioned in the end scroll at the end of every single video, including this one. Let's go to the end scroll. What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor?